So in my last video, we talked about thinking like an interior designer when it comes to sliding your mobile application or your web application. In this particular video, we are going to talk about color choices. So of course, if you're one of these people who struggle to kind of get your head around colors and choosing the right ones for your applications or website, then this is the video for you. So we're going to walk through a couple of examples here and hope you find it useful. So let's go. So just as a recap then from my previous video, if you haven't seen it, please do and go and watch the full video because it'll really, really help you out. But the 60, 30, 10 guideline is generally how we're looking at an interior designer and how they kind of think and when they're actually designing their room. As you can see here, 60% of the dominant color is made up of the ceiling, the walls color. The 30% is made up of the sofa color there. So it's kind of got this, uh, this gray 30% and then 10% is the ascent color. It's just picking out these key characteristics of the room. So that's how we're gonna think in terms of the way that we're applying color through our application. So again, the last video really does go into detail and gives you some good examples and it shows you how to apply that in Flutterflow as well. So here's some palettes which I've extracted from the Colors website. We'll go over to that in a second. I'll just show you how that works within Flutterflow, but I've just pulled some examples here for this particular slide. So in example number one there, you can see that we've got a, we've got a, a lovely range. We've got a nice gradient from the white or like the kind of light blue on the left-hand side through to a really pleasing blue color on the right-hand side. You've got enough range in that palette there for you to be able to build and construct a really good-looking mobile application. Within number two, you can see here that actually we've got two choices here so we've got kind of got the orange on the on the left which is a strong orange and then on the right you've got a like a, a dark blue now the good thing is is that we know that actually the 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 kind of the striking orange color would work well on blue and vice versa the blue would work really really well on the orange so just think like that and how that you would actually then apply that potentially into the color scheme of your application and we've also got some nice variants there certainly in the blue where you've kind of got the different shades of blue you can be you can see where you could actually have your more dominant color your 60 percent color and then actually then you've got uh, for your 30 percent you've got a couple of options there in that lower kind of darker blue range as well that you could apply inside your application so just moving ahead then, let's look at a couple more um, good examples here. So number one, you can see here we've got a good tonal range in that as well. It's a green, it's kind of like a very light shade through to a much, much darker range. So that's a good choice there. You've got strong ascent colors that can be used as well. And then number two there, you can see now we've not got so many choices, but actually we know that actually the brown on the left is, is a great opposite with the white. So we know that both those will go really, really well together. And because the shades as well that we've actually got um, in between, that you kind of got the slighter brown you can see that we've actually got like a tertiary color as well so if you go back to my previous video where we talk more about tertiary colors then you can see there's some, some good use that can be applied in that particular color so there's some good examples but what about some bad examples well let's have a look at those now so the bad examples that we've got here is number one there you can see there there's not really much range there you know if we were to put the the color on the left hand side in number one and apply that to the the right hand side of number one it's just going to come it's going to look really really dreadful within the UI and, and the colors in the middle you can just imagine that okay you could get away with um, the the light orange on the left hand side working with maybe a tertiary color of the second orange but it's just the range you just haven't got much to work with there so you'll probably just end up with something that looks pretty ghastly with inside the UI and then in number two you can see there there isn't really much there isn't much range in that those choice of 10 it's really quite it's really quite light on the left hand side but it's also really quite strikingly light on the right hand side so that will probably not work and it will probably really annoy your users if you were to to use that inside your application so let's move on then and let's look at a couple of other bad examples here you can see number one there really really isn't much range there okay so you might get away with number one in in the fact that you could actually have that as maybe your more dominant color um, on the background um, you haven't got much range then to look for your tertiary colors or or any of your secondary colors and then on the right hand side I can imagine that orange that actually if you would apply that on the on the blue in number one it would actually would look a bit kind of fuzzy 
fuzzy. It would kind of make it do something with my eyes. I'm sure it would. And number two, um, there really, there really, there really isn't any range in in number two whatsoever. It's too varied. There's not a lot of choice. Of course, you can pick out certain colours there and use them. But actually, as as a palette to actually look for, then I would probably avoid something like that. And of course, on that one, actually, I would always go back to what I learned when I was young: that blue and green should really never be seen. So that one is definitely for me not a great example. So there we go then, that's just a bit of an overview there to my thinking when it comes to palette choices. Let's now head over to, to some demos. Um, I'm going to show you the Colors website if you haven't seen it. I'm going to show you how to pull those actually into your Flutterflow application. And I'm also going to apply some of these styles to, mm, to the sample that I've got with inside Flutterflow and we'll see how things play out. So uh, let's head there now. So here we are on the coolers.co website. I've created an account. I'm at the home screen. And so I'm going to click on the explore trending palettes. So these are some of the palettes that I pulled into my slides. And the one that I'm going to be looking for is the blue one. That's the one I want to pull it into my Flutterflow example. So let's just do a little search for blue. And this is going to show me all the palettes that contain the term blue. So if I just scroll down here, I'm going to see the one that um, I used, which is just this one here. So you've got two ways of actually uh, pulling these colors actually into Flutterflow. You one way you can do it is you can actually export the palette. So I'm going to do that as the first example here. So I'm just going to click on export palette and then I'm going to choose code and it's going to come up with a load of code here. Just hit the copy button and let's head back to Flutterflow and import that actually into our application right now. So here I am in Flutterflow. I've got my sample project loaded. This is the sample project from my previous video where we kind of had the kind of the green color and the white sort of dominant color in the background. So this one I'm going to actually style up and I'm going to use the colors that we just pulled in from that palette. So I'm going to click on this little button down here called import from coolers. I just press that and then I'm going to paste what I've just put into the clipboard just into this box here just to an Apple V or control V and then just hit the import button. And what you're going to see is you're going to see all of the custom colors bar the first one all be populated with the colors from the actual theme. So from this, um, we now need to start using the colors from here up here. And once we've actually done that, I'm going to delete these colors out of here because I won't want to apply those to the rest of the application. And, and it's good to do that because you can then make sure that you are controlling the color choices that you actually have with inside your application. So now I've got those colors, I'm going to move over to the explore themes there. So just choose explore themes. And here is the sample page that I've got as a choice here. So this is the one that I'm going to style up first. And what I'm hopeful to do here is if I style this up to the way that I'd like to style it up, then the theme should apply to the rest of the application. So the first thing I'm going to do is set my most dominant color. It's my 60% color. OK, so with inside this particular application, I'm going to choose the Uranian blue, which is just here because I want that really sort of bright dominant color. So I'm just going to press on that there and I'm just going to copy this to the clipboard. Just hit cancel and I'm going to set this as my primary white background. So as I said on my previous video, that's the one that I choose as my most dominant color. So just select that and then just copy it, just paste over that there and hit use color. So you can see here now that I've got my blue. Now I also want to now choose what my my primary color is. So this is what my ascent color is. Okay, this is the 10%. So um, in this particular application, I'm going to choose the the most darkest blue, which is just down here, which is cobalt blue. So I'm just going to choose that. That's a big contrast between the uranium blue, which is really light, and and the most darkest color. Okay, which is the other end of that palette uh, that palette scale. Okay, so just select that, and then let's just copy this. And let's just paste that into my primary, which is just here. Use the color. So there we go. We've got the kind of the most prominent color there. Now I'm also going to now select my tertiary. So we know that we need a color which is going to complement the, the blue. So in this instance, I'm just going to choose something which is in the middle range. And this is the good thing about this palette is you can actually choose something right in the middle because it's got such a, a diverse of a diverse range of blue color. So in this instance, I'm going to choose the Argentinian blue, which is just here. So I'm just going to select that and I'm just going to copy this. And I'm just going to paste that into my my tertiary color. Use color and you can see here now that the blue is just there. Now, in this instance, because their color is right in between the kind of light and dark, there could be a valid case here where you might want to change the color of your skip button. Of course, if I had chosen something just a little bit lighter, so if I had chose this particular color here, you'll find that actually the gray color that I've actually got there 
um, is actually acceptable. If I just paste that in there, you can see there, you've got that kind of variation. So actually, I think that actually looks better. I don't wish to change the, the color of the skip button in this example. So I think that works really, really well. So pretty well much we're good. Um, the only bit we now need to choose, of course, is our secondary background. So this is the 30% dominance within inside the UI. So we know that we choose uranium blue there as the most dominant color. So I'm going to go one level up, okay? I'm going to choose the light sky blue. So I'm just going to choose that there. And I'm just going to then copy that and put that as the secondary background. So we know that is the 30% color just to say use color now you're not going to see any change here but if i now just flick over to then a screen that does actually use it so i'm just going to do down here and go to profile you can see here now that we've got some contrast between the background which is the dominant and we've just got the blue there which is the 30 percent and of course we've just got to deal with the border this just around the color around the outside there so what we need to do is we now need to choose a color which um it just kind of just pops off of that particular blue there okay so we're going to want to choose a slightly darker color and because we've got that range in the palette it really really works for us so we know that our secondary background is this particular color here so now we need to just drop it down a notch so you can see here the 90 caf 9 hex color is the light blue we can now just drop it down now to maybe the argentinian blue and that should give us a bit of a blue border around the outside of our our sort of our, our sort of text sort of boxes okay so i'm just going to choose the second uh, secondary color here and just use the color there so you can just see i've got that blue so what i always do in my work is i always reserve the secondary color for this type of thing where i'm using kind of borders or i'm using dividers or anything like that with inside my application so if i now flick now between a couple of different screens we should start to see that play out quite nicely you can see here we've got the blue there um, there could be a case of course here where we might want to actually inverse the color so it may be that actually you want to maybe choose a white but um in in this instance i think that actually the black is actually Actually working okay there perhaps might be some work that needs to be done there on the secondary text color where perhaps there is a little clash there with the with the choice of color but of course you can adjust that shade as you need to but as I just sort of move through the pages here you can see that actually generally that theme is playing out pretty well so that's one way of updating the colors if I just can't if I have just hit save changes there what I would now do is once I'm actually happy with my choices I would actually then delete out all of these additional colors because I don't want to see them anymore because I've now made up with inside my UI now of course if you now were to switch that to this to dark mode there would be some work that you need to do here and of course dark mode does mean dark so would you go for a much much more deeper sort of blue that means you could go to the palette and you could actually then pull another more darker a darker palette range actually into use for a dark mode theme or you might just simply want to choose the the, the, the kind of something much more sort of black and dark to represent a dark theme so you've got a choice there of what you could actually do so what I did was there as I imported the colors from um, from uh, that 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 copy and paste of course what you can also do with inside colors is you can actually just click on each of these colors here so if I just go here you can actually click on each of these and it will actually pop it into the clipboard so I could just select that one there it's copied to the clipboard and of course I could just paste those directly into to flood of flow into this particular area here I could go up here and I could just say change here and just paste it directly in there so the good thing about using importing colors is you can just then have them on screen you can then play around with them and you can adjust them as you need to so here we are then back on the colors website and you can see here that I've done a search up the top left there for orange and just down here this is the example that I use this was number two in the slides so let's see what that looks like in Flutterflow now that I've gone in and applied the styles so I've imported the colors in just as we did before and I've applied them to all the relevant sections that I need. You can see here that my, my ascent color is the primary color, which is the orange, which is the strongest orange. My tertiary color is a couple of shades down. So this is on the FF. Uh, 9E, so this, this is the orange peel color here. That's just to complement the primary color. Now my, my more dominant color, which is the background there has been selected and that is the darkest blue that I've got. And then my secondary, my 30% here is currently set as a, a couple of shades up here. So I've chosen the this particular um, marina 
uh, Marion Blue, I think it's called there. So I selected that there as the choice for the secondary color. So you can see here then that that actually applies really, really well throughout outside the UI. So if I now just sort of go through a couple of screens here, you can see how those colors work. The secondary color here that I've selected, which is kind of this mid-range blue, works really, really nice variance here from the actual secondary, the most 30% dominant color. And of course the, the, the blue on sort of the, the blue color as the background and the orange color as the foreground works really, really well. So just move through here and you can see here that again the panels here are, are looking quite good um, the text is quite vibrant it's like a it's like a primary white color here that's what I've, I've kind of selected and my secondary text is really just a slight notch down on the key text if I just move down here to details you can see it here on this particular screen and of course the divider here is picking up the secondary color. So there you go, hope you enjoyed this particular video as a follow up to my last video on thinking as an interior designer. Of course, please do like the video, that really, really does help the channel out. And of course, please do subscribe to my channel if you like the education that I'm providing. So until the next time, thanks for joining me and goodbye.